Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond. Welcome back to another YouTube video. And in this video, I want to do something a little different. Um, this was a technique that we recently saw at work, and it was kind of a clever thing to potentially stage malware or bad stuff or other programs that you want to run within Windows in DOS or, or Batch within the Windows command prompt, the cmd.exe, scripting language and, and shell system language and all that. So I thought it was kind of neat and kind of clever because they essentially just use variables um, to stage and leverage and put together uh, potentially just calling a payload or starting something new uh, as another program to kick off. And it would be all mangled and put together in like just printable characters English that all look like nonsense and gibberish so a little obfuscation to help potentially stage a payload and I thought it was kind of neat and clever and I thought like oh well you could actually automate like the creation of that and maybe you could get something random every time so it looks different and you could bundle it up and package it and whatever it's a thing um I'm going to obviously neuter that and we're not going to use it to stage malware or bad stuff. We'll use a proof of concept just like starting notepad or kickstarting a specific program and uh, like calc.exe and make it really easy for us in a testing proof of concept and obviously not doing anything bad or malicious because we don't do that. That's not what we do. So um, disclaimer, I am going to be kind of going in cold on this. So I'll use Python to script it out. Um, which, yeah, isn't native to Windows, um, but I'm going to have it installed and we're going to work with it. And we'll just use Python to decorate and create the actual launcher and, and thing itself. Again, I'm going in cold on this, so I might fumble around a good amount in Python. This will be kind of a raw, off-the-cuff chill video. So anyway, let's get to it. Uh, I guess I'll show you kind of what I'm talking about and we'll hop on over to my screen here. Let me fire up command prompt and I'll show you this trick, right? So you can set like any variable to be anything that you want uh, within batch and you can then use that variable even in the context that batch and the, the shell will automatically interpret. It'll just take it kind of literally. It'll understand and interpret that value. So you can use that to build out other commands or other things that you want to run. And that's kind of interesting and weird. So you can see I've just got the set variable here or that, that command of that function, whatever you really want to call it here. And we'll use that to go ahead and create a variable. That's just syntax. And we'll call it like uh, AAA, just as a, as a example. And I'm going to set that equal to the word set. And that's it. Now I have the variable AAA that I could access. And it's simply the word set as I've defined there. Uh, if we were to go ahead and define another variable, I'll go ahead and use AAA to go ahead and set a variable, which is kind of funky, right? Because we know that that word set is going to be interpreted. And I'll use that to create a new variable called BBB. Looks weird, right? Because I'm just using set in the place of that, including the space, and BBB will equal a space character, right? You kind of see where I'm going this? So now I could use AAA with BBB and now create a new variable called CCC, and I'll set that equal to an equal sign. And that might look weird. Uh, actually, we should probably change that to DDD because now I'm going to end up creating variables um, with just this syntax that we've just created and, and, and manifested. So the C will be the variable end up that we end up using and our D will equal equal signs that we use in the actual assignment operation. So it looks funny, equals equals, but I'm literally creating a variable that is just going to be the equal sign. Right? That just ran and it works. So now I could use AAA to set BBB to have my actual uh, space character there. And then I'll use CCC as a new variable that I'm going to try and define. And I'll use DDD to include that equal sign. Now I can set it to a value. I can set it to um, hacks or whatever. And that executed, and now I have the variable CCC, if you could keep track of that. So let me go ahead and echo out the value of CCC hacks. And I've just set that in a weird looking syntax, just wrapping and masking behind it all of the actual variables of the, the commands that will go ahead and create a variable. So now you could use this and you could build out in this weird random syntax other character set and 
create a potential payload that you could hide and mask with this funky thing. And you, it's obviously all going to be printable characters, and it doesn't look like you're creating a long string to invoke Mimi Cats or do anything that you might really want to. That's the gist. That's the gimmick. Um, now let's go ahead and I guess create a script for this. I'll make directory um, batch, I guess, and I'll hop over in, the, in there. And I'm going to use Sublime Text to create a obfuscator.py, I guess. And now that, that window is opened up, we can start to write our code. Um, again, I'm not a thousand percent positive where I'm going to go with this, so complete disclaimer if there's some weird fumbling and I don't do a incredible great job right off the cuff. But I'm going to import the random module because I want to essentially create random letters being my variable name, and then the Python code will just keep track of all that and know how to smartly create the payload. Um, string will give us all those random letters that we could use, and our end goal, right, will be to like kickstart a program. It'll, we'll, we'll just start calc, right? So calc is in C, Windows, System32, calc.exe, is that right? It is, okay, cool. So if I were to have the syntax for start, C, Windows, System32, calc.exe, it'll just start it. And that's really going to be our proof of concept. So, um, Goal, I guess, can equal start C colon Windows system32 calc.exe. But obviously, sure, you could replace this with anything you particularly wanted to. We saw it in the case of some nefarious stuff. And we're not going to do that. That's not what we're all about. <laughs> we're going to have this proof of concept to uh, kickstart a program in an obfuscated way within Batch and Windows. So... Let's go ahead and create a variable that we can use as our set operator. Because so we got to start with those, right? So let's actually define, I guess, a function before I do this so we can get random mess. <laughs> uh, we could, I guess, apply a length as an optional variable. Let's just call it like five <laughs> as the, the length of the randomness in that case. And let's go ahead and return a list comprehension of string.ascii lowercase for underscore in range of length. And I do want to jitter that a little bit. So I, I guess we can say min length and max length equals like 10. So for range of random has a rand range function doesn't it if i clear the screen here cls python again i'm using it in windows so import random random dot rand range i think zero to ten yeah cool okay so that'll work just fine for us let's use rand random dot rand range and I had to actually choose one of the random letters here. So let's use choice around that string list. And random will be min len. Whoa, oh, I'm jumping around min len and max len. Okay, so proof of concept, right? Let's just check out our get random mess and see if it actually works for us. Please let me out. Okay, let's Python obfuscator. And I failed, int object is not iterable. Oh, that has to be wrapped in range. So I did want to keep that. Gotcha. Range will go ahead and create the number sequence, but random.range is going to return the random number, and that's going to be used as the length of our range. So that's why we needed that. Cool. Let's try that one more time. And now we get some random mess. Ugsy. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, we do need to be careful in that, sure, we could potentially have a collision with our randomness and we could keep track of that. I don't know if I'll need to run into that in this. Um, I can use like a randoms that I can keep track of. So rand, I guess, can equal what we've got. And will global randoms really need to do anything because it's already a global variable? We can do like if rand not or while well, I, I want to 
check if rand not in randoms then we'll go ahead and add it to our set of random variables that we've seen so let's go ahead and append our rand and then we'll go ahead and return our rand um if i do a while well mm, And then I guess let's do a while rand in randoms. How do I, how do I, I want to get this logic right so that like it'll create that first. And Python, I don't think has a do while. Does Python have a do while? Uh, the danger of me opening up my actual web browser. Python, Python do while. Emulate a do while loop. Mm -mm -mm. I guess well, I mean I guess that would work right because it'll just keep randomizing it and then once it knows that it's not in randoms it'll go ahead and return it so I think that should work yeah it's still still going so whatever now let's get our set operator and our set operator will equal a get random mess so the code here that we're going to end up writing um should be i'm gonna use f strings we'll do set our set operator to equal the word set and that's all that we'll need for that first one, right? So at the end, I guess we will print out our code all joined together with new lines, right? So now, oh, I need to actually set the opera. Oh, I need to stink and call the function. That's why. Set all that nonsense into set, which is good. Okay, and now we need to get a primitive for a space character. So we will use this percent to set a space character, get random mess, set with the space now including our space character value like variable name will be equal to a space right good and then we need to actually get our equals character so that's the first primitive right equals character equals a get random mess and with this prologue here we've sort of gone ahead and used the set operator with the space character value to get a new variable our equals character equal to equals <laughs> oh that's so wonky right and then let's get a proof of concept dummy character so now we're using our set operator with our space character with the equals character actually being set uh, after I get a dummy name. So let's just use variable dummy name and then I'll use our value of our equals character to be, oh, my face is in the way. I'm so sorry. How long has that been doing that? Sorry. Value of our equals character equals, please subscribe. Good enough, right? So if I were to write all that out, and I were to copy that, if I were to clear the screen and paste all that, set is getting in the way of something. What's going wrong here? Set that thing equal to set, which it has, and then I set this other thing equal to a space character. So I have set space character AZTDM, why is the space character not working? Let's, um, 
let's do a little right here. So let's open a payload.bat, right? And we'll write it in, in write mode. So like with that as handle, we'll do handle.write. And then let's say final code equals all of that. So let's write that final code into that handle. Now when I run this obfuscator, I now have a subl.exe, actually just open it here in our payload.bat, which includes everything that we need. And there is a space character there. So if I were to try and run that payload.bat, it works. Okay, <laughs> so uh, what is the value of dummy name right now? Please subscribe. Excellent. Okay, the thing does the thing that it's supposed to do when it operates as a thing. So, get random s is working just fine. We have kind of a prologue right now, right? So let's change that variable name to prologue, and let's say code can equal our, uh, I guess an an empty thing, and let's do code. An empty thing plus a prologue. Does that work? You can add arrays like that, can't you? Oh, I also realized that I typed obfuscator wrong. What? <laughs> okay, so now that we have all that, now we need to be able to start to build out the primitives for getting all the other characters in here. The thing that I'm worried about is some of these special characters like the equal sign. Can I set those just as easily, just fine? Let me get back to the command prompt and we'll do kind of a proof of concept here. If I clear the screen and if I were to set A to equal a colon, can I echo A and it works just fine? I guess so. How about a forward slash? B can equal a forward slash? Yep. Echo B. Perfect. And a period. I think that's all I need. Um, set C to equal a period. Echo C. Yep, period. Fantastic. Okay, so now we need to start to build out a library of all the potential characters that we could end up using and generate their randomness for that. So let's grab a, like, and start to build, I guess, a dictionary of what we know. Um, let's just go ahead and create that dictionary of our own batch alphabet, right? So for a character in string.printable, we could, we should maybe define a function to be like set a variable now. Let's do that after we've created the prologue because now that we have the functionality to create variables at a whim, or like on whim, let's do a create variable var name and value. So let's return right an f string as we've done before with kind of the prologue-like syntax. Just this very, very last one where we have our proof of concept and we don't need that anymore. Let's return the F string of setting a var name, we'll replace that, and then the value, right? Let me zoom out so you can see that just a smidge because I know it, it's getting wonky when we're doing all this obfuscation. <laughs> our set operator, our space character, our var name with the equal sign will be set to that value. And then we'll return that. So for character in string printable, we'll go ahead and create a variable now that we can use that function of, and we should add this to our dictionary. So I'm trying to think about all that things that we need to do here. Create a variable with the get random mess name. So I guess I should actually keep track of that as a variable. So var name can equal that, value can equal character, create a variable with the random variable name with that value, and then we'll wanna add that to our current code. So code.append all that, and actually we should make a specific uh, var 
settings list, I think. Create a variable name, all of these variables. Um, that's right. And now we need to add it to our alphabet. So alphabet dot, what am I doing? I'm sorry, I'm like, my brain is just f being fried right now. It's still early in the morning. Alphabet value is what I wanna index because I wanna be able to know something based off of the specific key um, equal to that var name, right? Okay, good. So now let's go ahead and print out the joined rendition of all of the var settings that we've just created. So if I were to Python 3 our obfuscator, I totally failed. Var settings is a tuple. Why is that? Var settings on a pen. Var settings was made a list. Sequence item zero, expected string instance, tuple found. Why did we return? Oh, there's a stinking comma at the very, very end of my create variable function. WTF, why is that there? Okay, cool. Now we've gone ahead and created variable names for all of the potential letters we could use. All the characters and they're all created with randomness. Uh, they also have a new line in there. Do I, can I actually use that variable as a new line? I mean, I guess I have to execute this. Uh, that would probably fail. I feel like it would. Whatever. Let's uh, add our var settings into our code uh, after we've defined them. And then let's display that out. So now I have in my payload here, all of this, all of this, all of this. And if I were to go ahead and go ahead and run that payload. Okay, so the semicolon will not work. How about the new line? Which one of these was the new line? That was trpdvjxg. Nice. I like that. If I echo out that value, does it work? Nope, it's been set to nothing. How about H-U-Y-F-I-D? Nope, also been set to nothing. How about this guy? This should have a value. What, do any of these have a value? Let's get um, my F variable, obviously the most important one. F, okay, I mean, so that works, whatever, I'm cool with it, you know, not a big deal. <laughs> so now we've had a lot of, now we have a lot of potential, right? Because we have defined a randomness way to gain access to all of the potential characters that we might want to use. So we could use all of the characters that we have here in our goal and then go ahead and run it. <laughs> so... Let me start to build that out. Let's do a four character in our goal. Let's get the variable name that we need for one thing. So we can use our alphabet index at that character because that's what we set in really the alphabet. And let's, as a proof of concept, just kind of print that out just to see. So let's Python 3 our obfuscator and there's all of our stuff seemingly cool. And then we want to get the actual wrapped implementation of that. So an F string with the percent signs around it for our character and our goal. Now let's print out that so we're just getting the values and it'll be executed on the command line right 
So if I were to join all of that together without a new line, because it's going to just be one command, now this giant string, based off our randomness, will go ahead and execute the calculator. <laughs> right? That's the idea. So let's include that as a execute variable, right? And now let's add it into our code that we run. So I should be able to run the obfuscator and that failed um, because that needs to be a list on its own. Sorry, because all the others, all the other types here are lists. So now we're on that and our payload should have that at the very, 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 very end, which you can see it does. And theoretically, this, I'm crossing my fingers here because again, this I haven't done this, I'm going in cold. If I were to run this payload, something broke. Is that the less than symbol? I feel like I should remove some of those. It's probably breaking stuff. Did it actually even get down there? No, I think it started to read in. Yeah, LECPI broke it. Okay, so we got to remove some of those then. Let's do, um, let's create a little bad characters list and remove those. And let's change our string.printable to uh, a character set name that we want to use. So let's use character set at the very, very top here can be equal to our string.printable and then let's have a bad characters and let's say we, I mean, this can just be a string. It doesn't need to be a list. So uh, that, 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 and let's see if that's good enough. Uh, character set for bad, for bad in bad characters. Let's go ahead and remove that from the character set. So character set can equal character set dot replace just to remove that badness with nothing. And then rather than string dot printable, let's just use character set. Okay, now let's run the obfuscator and take a look at our payload. No seemingly weirdness yet, but we should run it and find it if we get anything bad. Clear the screen, run the payload and a colon's being funky. What is that one doing? Is that like a null byte? What comes after this the square brace? Oh, it's a backslash. Oh, it's escaping the new line. Huh. That's wonky. Okay. So I realize that maybe it's smarter to be using backslashes because it's a Windows file system, but that's going to be a little bit of an exception to our rule here, and we probably have to finagle that a little bit. Um, let's gloss over that for the time being. And an exercise left off, left to the reader. <laughs> How about that curly brace? Can I nerf that? Um, now, keep in mind, I'm doing all this in a very uh, whack-a-mole way, um, but if you are doing this with a legitimate payload and you are trying to do a little bit more with this, you could start to group some of the potential bad characters together with a known good character. So if I were to set, uh, clear the screen again, set um, A to equal that curly brace. Why did that work that time? Was there another thing that was being weird? What is, what is, what is with the curly brace? Oh, it's the back tick maybe? Set A to equal a back tick? No, that's totally fine. What the what? All right, can you run the obfuscator one more time, please? Python, py, py, hello, Python 3 obfuscator, and then payload.bat. What? What? Square brace is being funky. Oh, the backslash actually worked just fine. Are you like combining things that you shouldn't? What is TGKZK? <laughs> TGKZK, that equals the underscore. Eh. 
and this carrot is being wonky. I think that's it. Let's remove the carrot. Let's remove any any seemingly direction pointing <laughs> arrows. Obfuscator, payload, please. Back tick is still being. What is going on? Let's remove the back tick. Anyway, I guess I got distracted, and I was trying to tell you that. Um, if you are seeing this issue and you aren't needing to care about all of the potential characters, like in this character set out of string printable that we're building, you could just be taking the characters that you need out of your goal string, out of what you're trying to execute. And if there are weird bad characters, just morph them into another. So when I say that, I'll be like, oh, sure. If you were tripping up on the colon, just combine it with the C colon. And that might make it behave a little bit better. Uh, uh, um, um, Python 3, obfuscator, Python 3, payload.bat, and our curly brace is still being weird. So let's just remove the curly brace. We don't need it. Whatever. I'm fine with it. I don't care. CLS, payload.bat, here we go. Underscores. Why? Why? All right, remove the underscores. Now let's run the obfuscator. Now let's run the payload. Go, 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 go. This is unreal. We should realistically only care about the stuff in the goal. So maybe for the sake of our sanity uh, and mine, I guess, my, my, my sanity, let's just change this to the character in the goal string, create variables specific to those. And that's an easy fix. Like we don't really need to do that. So... Uh, I didn't run the obfuscator, so that's going to fail. Clear. Python 3, obfuscator. Run the payload. And we ran calc. <laughs> All right, so that added an extra seven minutes that we really, really didn't need. Um, anyway, I think that's kind of neat. I have uh, one other idea that we could take advantage here and, and use. Um, And I don't know if it'll work, but that's our obfuscator. Um, and we could actually add in a, in our prologue, right? Let's just create a little at echo off so it doesn't spit that all out. Um, run the obfuscator, run the payload, and add echo off is not going to behave. Fine. I don't think we need it. We, we, we actually didn't even end up using it or it wasn't present in the artifact that we found this in. So if anything, I think this does a good job and that this file alone might not trigger any EDR or antivirus thing because you are hiding this and masking this payload with a little bit of obfuscation. And now we've randomized it so it can be a different thing every single time. That's a little neat. Um, let's try and take this one step further. So here we go. We're at a checkpoint, right? Milestone one, we've kind of completed what we wanted to for this video, and that already took me a half hour. Uh, now we're going to, once again, kind of explore an uncharted territory because I haven't done this yet, so bear with me with all of my mess-ups. But here's the thing that you can do. Let me show you this. Um, batch can convert an an ASCII number or an integer into the ASCII character representation. So if I were to use CMD slash C and then exit with a number, right? Let's go 65 because that's in the ASCII table, the value representing a capital letter A. There we go. That will work. And now I can echo out this Percent sign equals exit code ASCII, and it's the letter A, right? So if I could do this for 66, now I've got B. And I could do this for like 92 or 91, and now I've got that symbol. So maybe that will also help us get out of the issue of 
maybe help that'll help us avoid the issue of running into those characters that were being problematic because we can convert it from a value. We could set that as we need to in our code. And that way we can mangle this a little bit more because we can do other weird things with numbers. Um, and this was not present in the uh, potential artifact that we found that was doing this. This is just my mental abomination <laughs> and diabolical disaster. So batch will let you do the modulus operator. We can go ahead and set, and if we are to set, we need to use a slash A because set slash A is um, A for doing arithmetic, and that grants you the opportunity to use the modulus operator. So let's set mod equal to like, let's go to um, mod like four. So that's two divided by four and the remainder. Well, two can't divide by four, so it's gonna get a remainder of two. Um, modulus operator is getting the remainder of a division operation. So the way we could get a number that we want is to take one number that we're looking for, like say we're looking to get the number eight. And if I were to multiply this by any random number, two, three, four, five, six, and if I were to take that number once again and multiply it by that same number, two, three, four, five, five, one down, now I've gotten a remainder of eight, or excuse me, a remainder of zero. Did I go too high or something? What was weird in that? Or do I have those values backwards? I think I, maybe I have those values backwards, 22, 23. I just did this. Does it need to be, it probably needs to be parenthesized. This was something that I was testing ahead of time. Okay, 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 whatever. Let's go 230, that thing, and then, yeah, okay, so it needs to be in parentheses. Cool, I'm not crazy, thank you. Um, add random numbers to that, three, four, five, six, and let's take that down a step. Now you have too much numbers. So two, three, two, two, three, five. How about that? Two, two, three, six, please. There we go. I don't know what the threshold and batch is for these numbers, uh, but I guess we can figure that out and we'll put it in the range of like a thousand uh, or so. If I were to go 9999, how does that work? Versus 9998. Okay, cool. So what if I went for 255 times that value? Or I guess 126 is the highest ASCII value that we can represent, right? So let's do 126 times that. 126, all right, we'll, we'll use that as our threshold. Nine, nine, four nines, quad nine will be what we'll, we will work with. That is enough tinkering and, and play. Um, let's experiment, and this might be a totally failed initiative. I don't know if I can get this right. But now we've got some other primitives that we want to work with. We want to use our set operator to create variables, and we will need the prolog to go ahead and create a slash and an A, because now we'll have a new way of defining variables if we were to use this method. Um, before I do this, I guess let's call this um, obfuscator two, or yeah, I mean, second obfuscator. <laughs> so that my tab complete works a little bit better. So now we're going to be defining a slash, and let's do that for a slash character and an A character. So our equals character has been set and this create variable name. I should honestly use our, mm, I guess I create like a second prologue, right? You know what I'm saying? Let's do that. Let's take this prologue here and then go ahead and create a second prologue where now we can use the create variable syntax and kind of as we did in goal, but now we're gonna end up doing it for just the string forward slash a, because we need that as part of our set slash a syntax. So the var name will be a get random mess. The character is still be going to be a character. And let's create a second prologue to append, creating it. 
and we've defined that already. So I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Let's create that second prologue uh, list here. Good. So now our code can equal our prologue plus our second prologue. Do I have a second character anywhere? I don't know why it uh, created that for me. Now we can redefine our create variable and do some weird stuff. Here's what we can do. Now that we've got the capability to create things with a slash a, we can use our set operator with our space character with the value of the alphabet that we're working in with a slash with the value of the alphabet slash a with another space character following that with a variable name set to a value. Uh, this will not work immediately because we need to go ahead and get the value based off of our modulus. So I'm going to define this as steps, and this will probably end up being the last step. But now what we need to do is determine the character that we want. So we can test if that value is or I guess if like length of value is one, otherwise we'll raise an assert error, or I guess a value error, right? I can only handle one character for obfuscation. Sure, totally fine. Um, I hope my face wasn't in the way for like half of this video. What we need to do now is set a variable to, oh geez, we're going to get super recursive here. Are we? No. We need to first know the value that we have. So ASCII value equals the ORD of that value. And ORD is right, right? ORD will return the ordinal. Python 3, ORD of capital A, 65. Great, that's good. Exit, please. So with that, we get the ASCII value and we need to then get it as a variable that we're going to define with the modulus. So we're going to set Oh boy. Sorry, this is hurting my mind right now. <laughs> Set operator. I gotta zoom out. I gotta zoom out because this is getting so lengthy. Set slash A to equal the Let's set some parentheses. No, 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 because I don't want the parentheses. I want Python to figure it out for me. So Python needs to do the, get a random number. So um, multiplier, right, can equal random dot range, random dot rand range of 1000 to 999. So the in the a mod b equals c modulus operation that we're doing, our a is going to be c times our multiplier, modulus b times our multiplier minus one, right? So I am not going to have any shame and I'm just going to define it that. So 
Uh, ASCII value is really what the C that we want because that's what we know our modulus is going to end up as. So A can equal to ASCII value multiplied by the multiplier, and then B can equal to ASCII value multiplied by the multiplier minus one. Great. So now I'm going to have a set operator, space character, alphabet. Um, set slash a so we can get into the math sorry i'm just thinking and this is bending my mind right now var name equals character can equal the parentheses and we don't even need parentheses anymore because we've already done that math for us thanks to python so that will be a mod b right so that has now given me a random that has given me the number but now i need to convert it back okay so Now I could just use that CMD slash B. Now I can just exit with that value. And we might not end up using the var name to do that because we probably need a temporary var name for that. So for that variable, right? Unless you, can you do that exit with, with the math in there or does it have to be through set? Like, let's try that. CMD slash C exits paste and then echo the equals exit code ASCII. No, that fails. How about 65? Okay, so we just can't do math like that. So let's slash a mod with our 65 with our 65 and then let's try and cmd slash c exit with our mod value which should work and we try and exit with that now we have a so we do need to use that temporary variable and that will be a get random mess name so now rather than using var name for the first one we will need to use a temporary variable set to that and then we will need to go ahead and exit with the value of that temporary one so ooh i want to define the variables to be able to execute cmd slash c because that's going to get annoying we can do that right because we already have our create variable primitives and that's just less of them or should we be using should we be using these get get our second layer of create variable after we've redefined it should we be using that to go ahead and create cmd i mean we can't we need we need that we need that after the fact so slash a we're going to end up having and we're also going to have cmd we already have the slash we already have the c uh we need exit and we need the space, even though we've already defined the space up top, we just haven't kept track of that in our alphabet range. So, steps equals all of that. Um, we should call this mod create variable rather than create variable because we're going to need to create variable repeatedly. So <laughs> I guess we should just kind of create, we already did create those. We created all those variables. So now we just need to use all of those in a string. So how should we do that? steps steps plus equals that 
This is probably an extremely confusing video and I'm sorry. <laughs> Steps equals that. And now we need to do for character in CMD slash C exit. And then we need to include all of those. We need to take pieces, pieces dot append the format string of the value of the alphabet that we know with our character, because now we'll have CMD slash all the way up to exit. And then we will do pieces dot append a F string with the value of our temporary variable. So we'll eventually have CMD slash C slash exit slash and the, the value of mod kind of just as we hit us just as we did before. And then we need to go ahead and set set with a create with a create variable. Uh, pieces actually should equal this a list with just all the pieces put together so that's on one line because this will go ahead and create the temporary variable with the numeric value of the value that we want and then for character in cmd slash c exit to stage that into an exit code. And then we have to go ahead and set the variable name of the var name to really be the exit value. So when I run create variable, will var name take the spot just fine? I think it will. So steps will now equal a set operator with a space with the alphabet. And we don't actually need this new alphabet slash A because we aren't doing any math in this. We're just setting a variable to that. And we could do that with a create variable because that's just gonna return it, is it not? Yeah. Steps, create variable, with the var name as we have done, good. Oh man, this is still blowing my mind because now I scrolled down and was like, wait, did we need to do that for the goal anyway? Um, var name should be our equals exit code ASCII, theoretically, right? And this might fail, this might completely fail. I realize I'm going on almost an hour and I, this is still on a whim. So let's create that variable as the last step and then we need to return all of these put together. So return Oh, we need to add that into the, add the pieces into the steps. Return all those pieces. No, return all those steps. Because those are all of the lines that we're building and the steps that are necessary to create a variable with this modulus operator. Um, so all of the code now We'll need to create all of these. So for the character in the goal, we are going to pass in a random mess as the variable name and then set the value. Wait, what did mod create value used to do? Okay, it would just run the function and it passed in the value. And we already figured that out. 
because we set value in a in a modulus ordinal thing. So for character and goal, we still just need to do all this, but now we're going to end up calling mod create variable with the var name and the variable. And that's gonna return a, a, a list. So var settings needs to actually add on this, right? And then all that alphabet works. Oh gosh, this is extremely confusing. I don't know if that worked, honestly. I, I honestly don't know. Let's see what's wrong with it. Python second obfuscator, alphabet is not defined. Excuse me? Where are we trying to run alphabet? Line 42? Second prolog. Oh, I guess we really should move that up. <laughs> alphabet should probably be defined like way, way up here. Here we go. It ran. Okay. Z types. Wow, that's a very nice random word that you generated. Oh boy. So this should equal what? Set slash A to mod can equal that, right? 115. What is what is the first one that we work with out of string.printable? Python 3, import string.printable. Excuse me? Oh, import string. Duh. String.printable. I can type printable. Holy cow. Zero. Now let's take the ord of that. 48. That's not good. Is that right? What did we do wrong? Whatever. Uh, let's try and run all this and just see if it works. No, no, not in Python, please. Okay. <laughs> Paste all that in and that's failing. Um, totally fine. Let's just get up to the very, very first uh, execution of creating a variable. So let's run payload.bat, cmd slash exit equals, oh, oh no, what's going on? It needs the percent sign? Why is it doing that? cmd slash exit equals, do I need a second percent sign and all that to like escape it? That's gonna look really weird, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. Python three second payload again. Let's just get all the exit codes. Oh, I'm missing a percent sign in one of these. Percent percent that. Exit ASCII is not exit. Do I need the literals there? What's happening? Oh, wait a second. I did have it there. It's just, sorry. The equal sign is, was weirding me out. Yeah, reload the thing. Now let's payload.bat. Oh! It did it. Oh, and it did it because it was S because it's for start. Oh, did it do it? Did it work? Did it? Let's go. Let's go. Let's see this. A T? Ooh. Holy crap. All right, let's just run the whole thing. Let's send it. Send it, boys. I, hello. Can I, have the whole, can I have the whole payload back, please? Thank you. All right, run one more time. One more time. Do the thing. That is awesome. 
Oh my gosh. Now, okay. So I'm a little worried. I'm a, I'm a little weirded out with this one because obviously we are running CMD slash C exit and that's invoking CMD. That's like starting a whole nother process. So I want to open up like Procmon or something and just let that run and see what happens. Uh, so let's do that. We're, we're at the hour mark. This has been a long, long show, but um, do I have sys internals? Sys internals. Nope, probably not. All right, let's get to Chrome and let's download sys internals. Sys internals. I want to watch and see like the serious amount of cmd.exes just flare up my computer or if that even happens. Um, but that's one way <laughs> of obfuscating. And that looks dirty, right? Like that that's crazy. <laughs> we could amp up those numbers if we wanted to and I guess we could probably finagle this a little bit more but let's let's download sys internals and see how we do I hope that was fun thanks for tolerating all of that guys holy crap I hope that was a good time all right, we'll wait for sys internals to download and I guess we'll review really everything that we went over here so we went in a lot of different places and I'm sorry for that, but eventually all we wanted to do was obfuscate the process of running a program. We used calc as our proof of concept. We wanted to define all of the potential characters that we might be using in that string to run the command start calculator and define them in like random variables. And uh, maybe we could actually do that with string.printable now and we won't have the issue. Can I try that? Are you guys cool with me trying that? Rather than just looping through goal now to create the character set, let's use all the characters and let's not remove them. Because I think this new method will actually allow us to, like using the modulus as a means to hide it even further, that should let us build out the entire printable character set. And it's cruising, it's going. Oh, I broke it. CMD slash C6. Oh, it's the stinking less than symbols. I guess those are still getting in the way because you need to use them as, as part of set. So that's why it dies. All right. I did a bad job of doing a recap because I got distracted. <laughs> that takes a while to stage everything, but yep, the pipe's still going weird which we don't exactly need. Do we need pipes? I mean, it'd be cool to actually have pipes. So let's try and keep the pipes in there and see if that was just the square braces that were making an issue. Nope. What is it? Is it the pipes? Let's take the pipes out. How's sys internals doing? Oh, they're downloaded. Okay, cool. What? Oh, did I not run the stinking obfuscator again? Second obfuscator payload. Let's uh let's get sys internals cruising while we're doing that. Let's drag this down and like let's run procmon. Just to see how absurd it is. Oh, it popped calc. Not that it didn't, it didn't pulp, it didn't pop calc. It's not an exploit, but <laughs> it's a cool obfuscation technique. Wow. Uh, all right, so let's see what we got. Can I filter for um, process name is cmd.exe? Yeah, add the item, please. Okay, so if I just start cmd, cmd. Will it show in Procmon? Yeah. Okay, it's doing its thing. Oh boy. I don't need all that. Can I can I clear that actually? <laughs> How do I clear? I do want a process start operation. So include only that. Cool. So now if I try and use this filtered technique using the modulus operator, using that batch gimmick to convert ASCII into uh, an actual letter, do we get a crap ton of cmd.exe payloads? 
Yep. <laughs> there they go. That's surprisingly... Is that, like, not enough? Or is it just, like... Oh, I think... Is it is it refreshing or something? I mean, the process ID stays the same. Here comes Calc. You know what? However long that took, that time is plenty. That is plenty fast, and the hackers don't need to worry about how much time it takes. Oh, wow. Look at the tool tip. Can I have her over that again? I want to see that again. I want you to show me the tool tip. Show me the arguments. Exit code ASCII equals four. Wow. <laughs> and all the variables. Oh, that's super cool. That's a mess. That was super fun though. I hope uh I hope that was I hope that was a good watch. I know it took us a long, long time, but I think we got a lot of really neat stuff out of that. And that's how you could potentially obfuscate just a little Kickstarter, just a stager, and uh I don't know, tinker with it. Again, this is for the sake of education. This is for the sake the sake of learning and seeing how crazy it is when you have this obfuscated thing. And it's just batch, you know. It's just CMD. Um, I showcased in another video how how you could disable the command prompt, and that's not a real security measure. It's not encouraged or enforced as one, but it's a thing you could do. The same way this is a thing you could do. Um, so we just got randomness to be able to define variables and then we we're able to use those variables as part of an actual command that was ran and build them out to create any essential scripting that we want. Uh, we just did it with one goal, just running one command to pop a calculator, but that's it. Um, and this is messy, dirty code, but this was all totally off the cuff. Um, and that was really, really cool and kind of fun. And that was fantastic when it worked. So that's been a lot of me talking. This has been an hour long video and I'm sure you have stuff that you have to get back to in your life. So let's wrap it up here. Thank you so, so much for watching. This has probably been one of the most fun videos I've done in a long while. And it was good to get into Python and, and just mess around for a little bit. So uh, if you did like this video, please do press that like button. Maybe leave a comment. Please subscribe. Do the whole YouTube algorithm thing. I'm super duper grateful. And maybe we can do more st stuff like this in the future. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. And let's, let's call it a day. Thanks so much, everybody. I love you. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.